That morning, like every other, I got out of bed at 5 a.m. and prepared breakfast for everyone. Today, I made fried eggs, grilled bacon, sautéed spinach, pancakes, and fruits. I tasted them, and they were pretty delicious. Then I served it to my mother-in-law and my husband, who woke up and joined me at the table. My husband whispered, Oh, it's good, and seemed to think it was perfectly delicious. My mother-in-law grinned for a moment and then said the unthinkable. What's this? It looks like dog food, she remarked, looking at her plate in disgust. What? I was stunned. I can't believe you serve this kind of food, she continued. As usual, my mother-in-law didn't hold back and made another one of her insulting remarks. And my husband, after taking another bite, spoke up. It tastes awful. I'd rather eat dog food than this, he said, agreeing with his mother. I lost my patience and stood up silently. Without saying a word, I threw all the food into the trash. My name is Athena, a 32-year-old housewife. Last year, I married a man named Daniel who worked at the same company. Newly wedded life with my husband was going pretty well. My husband said he wanted me to be a stay-at-home wife, so I quit my job and devoted myself to housework. I had always lived alone for a long time, so I knew how to cook. Since I became a housewife, I wanted to improve my cooking and tried many new recipes. Wow, this is really delicious. Really, Daniel used to say when I cooked for him. I was so glad my husband would finish all the food I cooked, saying it was delicious. I was so happy that I wanted to devote myself to cooking more. But our happy newlywed life came to a sudden end. My father-in-law passed away, and my mother-in-law was left all alone. My husband said to me, As the eldest son, I can't leave my mother alone. He asked if we could move in with my mother-in-law. I didn't have a bad impression of her, but I was worried that I would have to be attentive to her if I had to live with her. But my husband insisted, so I gave in and decided to move in with her. Thus began my life with my mother-in-law and husband at my parents-in-law's house. From a rather early stage, my mother-in-law started to treat me badly. She was always lazy and left all the housework to me, yet she would complain that I didn't know how to clean well and didn't pay attention to detail. Her most common complaint was about my cooking. One day, she would complain that the food was too salty, so I used less salt, and then she wouldn't eat it because it was too bland. After I finished cooking, she would complain, I'm not in the mood for this dish today. The most annoying of all was breakfast. Since my husband wanted to live with his mother at her house, he is now farther away from work and it takes him one and a half hours to get there. That's why he leaves the house early in the morning. I wanted to wake up around 6 a.m. to prepare something easy for breakfast, like simple toast and scrambled eggs, but my mother-in-law got angry at me. You can't serve such a light breakfast to the breadwinner of the family, she exclaimed. She started telling me to cook a main dish, side dishes, and fruit. I tried to rebel, thinking there was no way I could do such a complicated thing, but even my husband backed her up. Mama is right, he said. I'm going to ask you to do it from tomorrow. With no one on my side, I had no choice but to comply with their unreasonable demands. But I was still in good spirits at the time. I was determined to make a perfect breakfast and surprise them. Then I started getting up at 5 a.m. to make breakfast. One day, it was grilled salmon, sautéed spinach, eggs, and fruits. Another day, I made an omelet with vegetables like tomatoes, onions, and peppers. I also grilled sausages and put them on the side. I made a variety of dishes and kept adding new ones. However, despite all my efforts, my mother-in-law would always criticize my cooking. What a horrible dish this is, she'd say, shaking her head in disapproval. My husband, at first, said it was delicious, but my mother-in-law kept saying it was terrible. Eventually, he began to echo her sentiments. You know, it's not that great, he'd tell me, following her lead. 
My husband has always been a bit of a mommy's boy, but when we moved in together, it got worse. Now he blindly listens to his mother's opinion and agrees with everything she says. They would criticize my cooking every day, saying it was bad. So I gradually lost confidence in my cooking, even though it tastes good to me when I eat it by myself. But as they continued to tell me my food tasted bad, I started to think I had no talent in cooking. Then I received an invitation to a home party. It was a potluck, and I was asked to bring a dish. Although I was a little worried, I cooked a dish and brought it to the party. My dish was a big hit with the guests, and everyone told me it was delicious. This convinced me that it wasn't my cooking skills. It was my mother-in-law who was crazy. I later called my mother-in-law and my husband into the living room and told them to stop criticizing my cooking. I explained that my friends gave me a lot of compliments for my cooking. My mother-in-law looked a little embarrassed. She said, What? You are a boring wife who doesn't even get a joke? I was confused and replied, What? A joke? She continued, Young people these days are so clueless. Don't be ridiculous. Do you know how much pain I'm going through? You're exaggerating. I don't know what kind of thought process you have, my husband added. Hey, Athena, calm down. Don't embarrass my mother. What? Was it my fault? I wanted to have a proper discussion, but I felt like I was being played for a joke. All that remained was a gloomy feeling inside me. Then one day, at breakfast, I ran out of patience. That day, I woke up at 5 a.m., as usual, and made breakfast for everyone. Today, I made fried eggs, grilled bacon, sautéed spinach, pancakes, and fruits. I tasted them, and they were pretty delicious. Then I served it to my mother-in-law and my husband, who woke up and joined me at the table. My husband whispered, Oh, and seemed to think it was perfectly delicious. But then my mother-in-law grinned for a moment and said the unthinkable, What's this? It looks like dog food. What? I exclaimed indignantly. I couldn't believe what she said. I can't believe you serve this kind of food, she added. My mother-in-law never learned her lesson and said such a thing again. My husband, after taking a bite, chimed in. It sure tastes bad. I'd rather eat dog food than this. Then turned to his mother and said, Sorry about that, Mom. I lost my patience and stood up silently. Without saying a word, I threw all the food into the trash. My husband yelled, What the hell are you doing? You going to waste the food? I'd rather throw it away than let you eat it, I responded, wrapping my portion in plastic wrap and putting it in the fridge. He snapped, What am I supposed to eat for breakfast? You can cook whatever you want, I replied calmly. We don't have time for that, he argued. I don't care. You won't die if you skip one meal, I retorted. My husband still wanted to say something, but it was time to go to work, so he gave up and left. My mother-in-law, sarcastic as always, said, Because of your selfishness, we have to go somewhere to eat breakfast. I ignored her and started cleaning the house. Then, when lunchtime came, I took my breakfast out of the fridge and ate it, and it was delicious. During my lunch break, I got a message from my husband. I had to buy a sandwich at a supermarket because you threw away my breakfast. Everyone at work said they felt sorry for me when I told them you didn't make me breakfast. I don't know what you're mad about, but tomorrow you're going to have to do better. Why was he acting like the victim and making me out to be the bad one? I was so angry that I immediately went to the city office to get the divorce papers. When my husband came home from work at night, I confronted him with the divorce papers. Both my husband and my mother-in-law were surprised. My husband exclaimed, Oh, come on, a divorce over something trivial as that? You're so mentally unstable. No matter how many times I've warned you about the way your mother treats me, you just say it's a joke. I've been going through a tough time, but you didn't stop at all. That's enough to be considered moral harassment. Anyway, I don't want to stay in this house anymore. I'm going back to my parents' house. Let's talk about the rest through my lawyer, I said firmly. My mother-in-law and husband were stunned, but I ignored them and left.
After that, my husband was reluctant to divorce me for a while, but thanks to the lawyer's help, the divorce was finalized. By the way, I secretly recorded my mother-in-law's mistreatment every morning, so I was able to get alimony for moral harassment. Later, my husband called me in tears and asked me to come back. He told me that his mother's cooking was very bad. My husband had gotten used to my elaborate dishes, and he said that all of his mother's cooking was too salty, making him so sick that he couldn't even finish it. Furthermore, my mother-in-law had become so lazy because she left all the housework for me to do. Now she cleans the house with a great deal of fatigue, but it's too late for me to come back now. My love for my ex-husband has long since cooled off. I also planned some revenge for my ex-husband. There are many of my ex-colleagues in his office, so I met with my former co-workers and told them the truth. I took pictures of the breakfast I cooked with different menus every morning. I created an account and posted them on Instagram. I showed my Instagram to my ex-colleagues and explained that I had cooked such elaborate breakfasts every day. My ex-co-workers told everyone at work about it, and word quickly spread throughout the company. Everyone gave my ex-husband the cold shoulder for harassing his wife, who was trying to be so good. He really deserves it. On the other hand, I was able to get a new job, and I'm now living comfortably on my own. I don't have to get up at 5 a.m. anymore, and I sleep well every day. Cooking has become one of my hobbies so I'm going to keep up with my skills and add new recipes.